So Arturia just released a new update for Pigment. So now we're running Pigments 5, I believe. And within that update, they made some new feature updates for the sequencer within Pigments, which I find pretty interesting. So I thought I could teach you guys on how to make use of the sequencer within Pigments, but trigger another synth of your choice. So to demonstrate this, I have prepared a little simple patch for a vital. Sounds like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sequencer within pigments in order to trigger the patch in vital. So by doing that, you have to make sure that you're receiving MIDI from the channel pigments is in. So in Ableton, you go to the routing section you choose pigments. And here where it says post effects, I like to choose pigments again. This should make it so that whenever we play something from pigments, whenever it receives a MIDI note, it's going to trigger the sound within Vital. One last thing, just make sure you turn off the engine within pigments because otherwise you're going to get sound from pigments as well. And Lastly, just activate the sequencer. So now, let's just loop this section. We should be getting, um, if we set it to monitor in over here, oh, I think it's like this, sorry. So set it to monitor in. So now we should get the MIDI from pigments into vital. Oops, was the opposite. And from here, what we can do, we could go in here and try out the new generation, for example, over here, the, the generative uh, sequencing. Um, so let's try, I don't know, maybe Japanese Thriller, whatever that is. And then you just press the dice over here. So um, notice that it loops every time. If you don't want that and you just wanted to generate new sequences every bar, for example, you can do it like so. And then you can play around with the probability, for example. So yeah, that's how you can use the sequencer in order to trigger um, other synth that you like. Uh, one last thing, you could actually record the MIDI that the sequencer is playing. So let's just set that to forward again instead of forward and backwards. And let's say I want to save this pattern as a, um, save this like MIDI as, as a MIDI pattern. Uh, you can just make sure you record it and then And then you got your MIDI pattern right here, which means that we don't need pigments anymore, for example. So let's just fall in. And then you can go in here and do the edits that you want to do, for example. So yeah, that's everything I want to show you for today. And I hope to see you in the next one.